Okay, so the next step, step two, was to believe and expect that you will achieve those goals. So believing and expecting that you'll achieve them. Up till now, do you believe you uh, do you have you no, no, do you believe and expect that you will achieve your goals? Have you been uh, perhaps waiting to see what might happen rather than committing 100%? For example, um, if you know that a uh, someone said, "Oh yeah, I've, I've um, achieved really good results with this diet plan," and you've thought, "Oh no, I, uh, that's not for me. That's not for me, and I'm not willing to commit that." That's kind of saying, "Well, actually." I don't believe that and expect that that will work for me or with the sessions that you're coming to here if you're a current client, um, have you been not making the time necessarily to uh, to come here as many times as you, you could be coming really and you haven't perhaps been believing that this uh, will work for you, it will work for someone else perhaps but it won't necessarily work for you so you've not been believing and expecting that what uh, you're doing to achieve your goals will actually work. That Does that make sense? It will all become clear in the, the activity you're going to do. So perhaps you've not been committing 100%. Perhaps you've also been saying... I don't know if it's on here, is it? No, it's not. So uh, we'll go back a second. We're going to go over some old beliefs. So uh, <coughs> hopefully old beliefs, anyway. So uh, some of these... Um, some beliefs that you might have might be holding you back and we're going to try and get to the bottom of those beliefs right now in this room. So I've got an exercise for you. All you need to do, you don't need pens or papers uh, for this. All you need to do is just be open to um, discovering what some of your, um, not necessarily negative beliefs, but some of your limiting beliefs um, may be and what's been holding you back and why perhaps you've not been 100% 100% committed to achieving your goals in the past and then perhaps you haven't achieved them in the past because you've not been 100% committed okay so we're going to go over some of those now so it, you don't need your pen and paper like I said you just need to be able to move so as long as you've got enough space those on the back row if you uh, haven't then we'll just move the chairs forward a little bit I'm going to read out some statements and if you believe that the statement applies to you um, so when I read it out, uh, you think, yeah, that's what I think, or uh, that's what I believe about myself, or yeah, I say that a lot. If it resonates with you, you need to move, okay? And move is in, if you're stood up, so we'll, we'll, all, start, we'll all start sitting down, and then when I read a, a statement out, if you, um, if you think it, it applies to you, you stand up, and if you're standing up and then I say another one and that applies to you, you sit down. Okay, so that's the movement that I want you to do. I stand up, sit down. No one here is that close to anyone else that you'd be, well, a few couple of you are, are relations related. So I don't want you to nudge and say, that's you, that is. Imagine, you need to stand up on this one. It's not about that. If you like, close your eyes, try and get into the zone a little bit and be open to... Uh, experiencing some kind of emotions as well when you're hearing these statements. Um, and then we are going to do an exercise based on what we, we find from this one. So all you need to do right now is listen and move, stand up or sit down if you think it applies to you. Ready? Okay. So, I don't have the right personality to succeed. I can't keep up. I lack focus. I'm not worth it. Now's not the time. I'll get overwhelmed. I can't have it all. I don't have what it takes. I don't know enough. I don't have enough time. I'm a failure. I have to be fake for people to like me. I can't do this. I'm no good at dieting. I can't handle more things to do. <coughs> Who am I to be successful? I don't have all the answers. I won't be able to handle extra commitments. I'll have to do a half-hearted job. I will spread myself too thin. I don't deserve this. This is hard work. It will all be taken away when I get it. I can't afford to get help. I don't have money to spend on myself. I'm already too busy. I'm too disorganised. I'm not motivated enough. 
happening. I won't enjoy it. It won't work for me. I won't be able to have a life. What if people laugh at me? I'll have to work too hard to succeed. People won't like me if I'm successful. It can't be easy, it must be hard. I might have to give up too much time. I have kids, I have to put them first. What if I get good results and then lose it all? You can't be a good parent and be in good shape. Something has to give. Who do I think I am anyway? My partner will leave me if I'm fitter than him. <laughs> what will my family think? What will my friends think? I never succeed, so why even bother? Okay, so now you can just sit, everyone sit down. And you'll find under your first activity sheet, there should be a list, or the list of the obstacles, potential obstacles that I just read out. That'll be underneath <coughs> there. And what I want you to do is to go through that and uh, circle or star or highlight in some way all of the ones that you moved on. So when you think about what your old belief was, which is basically what the statements there that we've uh, we've had written down, uh, that we've got written in front of you, have a think about when you, you've uh, highlighted some of them, where they came from. Can you think of, um, let's give you some examples. Uh, for example, if you, you highlighted, I'm not worth it, um, <laughs> where might that have come from? Has, has someone told you that? Um, so beliefs are formed when... Uh, someone with authority tells you something, so uh, it can be, this is why usually they're done um, from childhood or, uh, yeah, from early ages, because parents, obviously authority, teachers, <coughs> sort of thing, grandparents as well, um, so someone with authority, someone when you're this small, someone who's bigger than you, that's automatically kind of like authority, they're bigger than you, they'll, like, even when you're at school and uh, uh, one of the older children tells you something you believe them because actually if someone older has told you then they've got authority over you so they they uh you should believe what they say um so someone with authority some uh, when they do it with impact as well so if someone shouts at you that's going to um emphasize it a lot more so if i um shouted at joanne for example and, and told you you're amazing like that how does that kind of stick with you a little bit oh she said i was yeah, so you're not just going to ignore that, are you? And if I said it, you're amazing, you're amazing, you're amazing, you're amazing, like that, constantly, I'd like to think that you'd walk away going, yeah, I'm pretty damn amazing, me. Like, and it, it, you'd, you'd start to believe that, actually, no, I am amazing. Becky said it. And even just the fact that I'm stood up as well, because you guys are sat down, when I'm stood up, I automatically, and I'm, I'm presenting to you, I've got a bit more authority right now of you guys. So if, whatever I tell you now, <coughs> I'd like to think you'd say, well, actually, yeah, that, sh that must be, that makes sense. Like, that must be true because she's saying it, stood up in front of me, and she knows what she's talking about. So there's that. So there's authority, impact, and repetition. So it, when someone tells you something over and over, so I was going to use, for example, uh, if one of your beliefs was, I'm not worth it, perhaps someone has told you someone it doesn't matter who it was perhaps someone said you're not worth it you're not you're not worth that it's you know not important like or it's <coughs> maybe not necessarily those words but they might have um might have said something that's led to you kind of uh putting it into those words and and then they might have not meant it necessarily to affect you so much and you to take it almost to heart but actually it does, it does. It. If someone with authority or doing it with impact or repetitively doing it, then you'll start to believe it and then that's a, a limiting belief for you for the future. So, uh, think about where they come from. Um, is there a possibility they might be false? Is there a possibility that actually that person that told you you're not worth it is lying? That actually, who are they to say that you're not worth whatever the worth is, whatever the value uh, that actually, yeah, you are worth it, and they are wrong. Does that is there a possibility that that could be true? Um, and how would your life change if you chose not to believe uh, whatever it is that you've written down, the limiting belief you've written down? What, how would your life change if you chose to believe that actually you are worth it, and when you invest money or time into yourself, that yeah, you're worth it, 
you deserve to have that and deserve to achieve your goals, how would your life change if you started to change your thoughts? And what, would you, what could you replace the old belief that, with that could be aligned with your goals that we've written down at the start? So some of you have already started, which is great. You might have done this one before. Um, what you're going to do is on the worksheet that you've got uh, from the start, on the back, we've got a table there that's got 10 uh, lines in it and two columns. <coughs> I want you to quickly jot down the, uh, we'll do 10 just because there's only 10 lines, but if you've got more limiting beliefs than that, that's fine as well. We just need to do a bit of extra work on them. So write down 10 limiting beliefs on this table here in the left-hand column, and then I want you to write the new belief. So for example, I'm not worth it becomes... I am most definitely worth it, yeah? Or you could say, uh, I deserve this, or whatever. You want you change the language if you want to, but we're just going to do the opposite. We're going to write down the opposite of that. So your new belief will be a new positive, helpful uh, belief. Before we move on, what I want you to do at home, what I'd like you to do, is to be reinforcing those uh, new beliefs with yourself. So you can work with a partner if you want, with me or with someone you know, partner or a colleague, friend, whoever. Um, but you need to be doing, like I said, remember three things. So authority, so ideally someone who you respect, someone who you're going to listen to, and actually when they tell you something, you believe it, that it's true, yeah? Um, so someone with authority, someone saying it with impact. Now, a good way of doing that when you're on your own is to look yourself in the mirror, eye to eye, and like looking at yourself in the eyes, in the mirror, and saying the new beliefs. So if it's, uh, I'm not worth it, so it's saying, I am most definitely worth it. Looking yourself in the mirror, <coughs> I am most definitely worth it. I am worth it 100%. I am most definitely worth every penny that I spend on myself. Whatever it is, you, you looking yourself in the mirror, saying it six times will really help you. Doing that every day, um, you can also do it in your car if you drive um, to work or um, you walk even. You could do it if you wanted to talk out loud. It's always good to say it out loud rather than in your head. Saying it in your head helps, but saying it out loud reinforces it more. And the repetitiveness of doing it six times every day for two or three weeks will really help to change 